Jesus, it is hot in here. It is very hot under the collar. And I'll tell you what is is scorching, and that is the Liverpool celebrations. They are scorching up to max because Liverpool are officially the Premier League champions 2019-2020. Hello there, guys. I'm the CHALL, and welcome back to another video. This is all about Liverpool winning the Premier League title. 2019-2020 champions after Chelsea beat Manchester City two goals to one at Stamford Bridge last night. That confirmed that Liverpool mathematically were Premier League champions. So the only things need sorting now is the Champions League, the Europa League, places and of course the relegation battle who's going down with realistically adrift Norwich City who are not mathematically down but of course are adrift so before we get into it please like comment subscribe click the notification bell for more videos and let's zoom into the video so Liverpool think of it five years ago Liverpool were 10th they were in free fall they brought in John W Henry a few years before that uh, to replace Tom Hicks and George Gillette after the sale of the club when Roy Hodgson was in charge. And, um, yeah, this actually escalated from there, really, because, of course, they went from there, they brought in the signs they needed to bring in, and they they became European champions, and they're now Premier League champions for the first time in 30 years. And I tell you what, Trent Alexander-Arnold, TAA, more like TNT, he's blowing up the scene right now, what a free kick against Palace. Um, and, of course, Liverpool didn't have to kick a ball to win. You know, they did it without even you know kicking a ball, but they technically did it against Palace in the 4-0 win. I'll be honest, I didn't watch it. My eyes couldn't take much more of the screens on that day, so um, I just listened to it. And I watched over the highlights again. Fabinho, great goal. Alexander-Arnold's free kick. Magical, one of uh, probably the best of the four goals in my opinion, and um, yeah, of course Chelsea then put the final nail in the coffin for City after a two-one win. So let's talk about that game. So of course Pulisic, uh, you know, getting one of the goals for Chelsea. Um, there was also a handball possible decision in there. I'm not too sure. I mean, I'm going to go fifty-fifty on that. I'm not. I I, I I I couldn't really judge that to be honest. Um, but Liverpool, let's talk about Liverpool in this video. But can I just say, by the way, can I just remind you guys, 2016, Chelsea gift less of the title by drawing with their rival Spurs. 2017, they beat West Brom to win the title. And 2020, they beat City to gift Liverpool the title. You're generous, Chelsea. You're very, very generous. Uh, but no doubt you'll be in the hunt next season. You've got Kai, ha Kai Havertz possibly coming in. Ziyech coming in for definite. Werner coming in for definite. So you've got, you know, good squad lined up for next season. And, you know, I think that Chelsea are going to be real contenders on the Lampard next season, hopefully. Um... But, of course, they've got to hang on to a Champions League place. That was what they were fighting for. Of course, they've, they're have they hanging on to it right now. Um, Leicester keep dropping points. United are going to be up there as well. Uh, depends what happens with this court hearing with Man City. Depends if fifth place are going to get Champions League football. And City's going to be banned for a year or two years, uh, depending on what the hearing says with that. But let's take you back to five years ago when Liverpool were 10th place and Jurgen Klopp walked in on the 8th of October 2015 for the first time at Anfield. So Jurgen Klopp walked into Anfield on the 8th of October 2015 for the first time. There was one keynote message from his public address. We must turn from doubters to believers. Less than five years on, no one doubts Klopp or his players after a remarkable rise from 10th place on his arrival to European champions for sixth time. Now they have returned to the domestic perch as Premier League champions. Behind the scenes, away from the public glaze, his mat meticulous approach as well as his intellect for football's modern methods and matters outside the game make him the towering figure in Liverpool's spectacular revival. Klopp, of course, is the leader in all respects, while Krejutz is now joined by Pep Legendas on the coaching staff. Um, an example of how the Klopp Kravitz partnership works is seen in messages exchanged by the, by the pair during the 2018 World Cup in Russia. Uh, they had honed in on the increasing influence of set pieces, both defensive and attacking, and a decision was made by a more innovative, especially at Liverpool, were now armed with the height of Virgil van Dijk and the delivery of Trent Alexander Arnold. In 2017 18, Liverpool scored 13 goals and conceded 12 from set pieces. Increased focus and innovation following the World Cup, sold and scored 29, conceded only 8 in the subsequent campaign. That was the campaign where they just missed out on the title to Man City and, of course, they've now overthrown their rivals. Um, 
So, of course, during the normal week at Mel, we'll crave it. We'll usually present Klopp with 90 minutes of an analytical detail, which will be whittled down over the course of two meetings to a 25-30 minute presentation, which the manager will deliver the day before the game. Klopp, as ever, takes the final decisions, but anal analysis proven by Kravitz has always been crucial, as the more visible presence of lively, tactical, sharp legendas. The captain, Jordan Henderson, signed by Kenny Dalglish back in June 2011, had his doubters almost up to the time he lifted the Champions League in Madrid last May. Klopp never wavered. Now, Henderson's form and reputation has never been higher. Firmino is an another he inherited, signed from Hoffenheim in 2015 June, initially raised doubts over Liverpool's transfer committee, and of course a previous time there was justifiable cause to question after a muddled transfer policy, especially after the £75 million sale of Luis Suarez to Barcelona back in summer 2014. The prime example was the folly of subsequently spending £16 million on Mario Balotelli from AC Milan shortly after them, Brendan Rodgers, and insisted publicly, I can categorically tell you he will not be coming to Liverpool. Now, this is where my theories kick into the video. So, there's three words, three words, three very important words they should be in the flaming dictionary that are crucial to Liverpool winning this season. Recruitment. Backing, and of course, talent. Recruitment, recruiting the staff he needs, the players he needs, the backing from the board to get out those and get those players, the first names on his wish list, and the talent. Not just from the players he signs, but the players he keeps, the players that don't get as many game time as last season or the previous seasons, however, still provide for the team and don't moan about the game time and just get on with their job. And of course, the academy players. Trent Alexander-Arnold, if I was mistaken, is an academy player. He rose up through the academy ranks and he just stormed it like that and he's become number one right back in the Premier League, in my opinion. Uh, ahead of wan Saka, which is saying something since I'm a Man U follower as well as a Doncaster Rovers fan. I'll do a Doncaster Rovers video today as well, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and Liverpool just absolutely blew away this league. They are a natural disaster in a good way because they absolutely tornadoed through this league. And Man City were blown away by a hurricane of talent by Liverpool. You know, Chelsea were, you know, whirlwinded out of this world. And Leicester City were blown out of the water by a Liverpoolian tsunami. Uh, they are a natural disaster in a positive way. Liverpool were just a season waiting to happen. And you know what? Yes, I'm a Man U follower, but I will hold my hands up and admit Liverpool were deserving of the Premier League title. They absolutely deserved it this season because they've been very consistent. One of the only consistent teams this season there's other teams that have done really really well but have dropped off at certain points especially after this lockdown with a couple of teams like Shef like Sheffield United Leicester City um, Chelsea on a couple of occasions but I tell you what Liverpool have been consistently strong yes there was the most side derby but without fans you know the most side derby becomes very scrappy uh, so it was expected for that um, so it's, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. But you know what? I don't blame anyone else. I think Man City should blame their defence because their defensive frailties have led to Liverpool winning this league. And I had an, I had an inkling that Liverpool would win this league because, um, you know, it, especially since the Norwich and Wolves game at the, in the first half of the season for Man City when they lost both of them. Um, Wolves 2 2-0, I think it was 2-3-0, uh, Dama Traore still in the show for them, uh, and of course the Norwich game when they lost 3-2, so, you know, it, those were those were games that will stick out in my mind as defensive frailties for City, and that's because they didn't really have the main defenders they needed, um, obviously there's a couple of City fans out there saying get Koulibaly in, I mean, would he be the savior to all the problems? He could be, in some retrospects he's a pro, and in some retrospects he's a con, he's a pro and a con, he's a mix. Uh, but he is a world-class defender. He wants the world-class moves. So, you know, Man City could look at getting Koulibaly to improve their defence and make them look more solid and keep improving and keep, you know, catching up with Liverpool next season uh, as Liverpool defend their title for the first time in 30 years. Uh, but what I will say about Liverpool is do they need strengthen in the summer? You know what? Yes, they, need, they do need strengthen. They need just as good a bench as the first team. You know, the first team and the bench need to be 
near enough the same or the bench needs to be a little bit less dip in quality than the first team because that's why you have a first team uh, and not a bench as well but the bench needs to be just as good as the first team so there's a few players I keep there's a few players that are still really young and have need, need time to develop but there's a lot of talent that may need to go uh, whether Lallana's going to go or not we're not too sure Mignolet, of course, Carrius is coming back from his two-year loan from Besiktas and he wants to compete with Alisson for the number one spot. So, you know, will Liverpool just force the sale of Carrius to another club? Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. But in closing in this video, Liverpool, well done. Premier League champions, 2019-2020. So they're going to be your defending champions for the 2020-2021 season, which I'm very excited for because there's some very exciting... Uh, things happening uh, as we go into next season so like we said we've only got a few things to sort out in the Premier League this year we've got the Champions League and Europa League places and of course the last relegation places uh, Norwich are adrift you know they're pretty much going to go down in my opinion I think it's inevitable uh, but it's, it's between Villa West Ham and Bournemouth for the other two places so it's going to be interesting. I still think it'll be West Ham and Villa. I think Bournemouth will survive. I think West Ham's got Chelsea next. So that's going to be a big London derby. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm not sure who Bournemouth plays next. But I know they play Man U in a, in a couple of weeks. So we'll see what happens with that. But for now, guys, thank you very, very much. My name is the C-H-A-L-L. Please like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye. Goodbye.